Hey, how's it going everybody, it's Geet. So when you download an app from the Google Play Store, for example, you may have noticed that right below the logo, there's a category. And the category of productivity apps in particular has grown massively over the past couple of years. In fact, in 2013, it grew 150%, and that's second only to social media and messaging apps. So the app space is huge, and I'm gonna focus in on a subset of that that I'm calling personal productivity. Uh, to me, you're most personally productive if you really feel like you're honestly living life to the fullest. And that may mean that some of the tasks, some of the things that you might consider productive aren't actually that productive. So for me, there are three main properties of a great personal productivity system. First, it has to be your drafting table. And this means that it's a place that you can go to organize some of your higher level thoughts, some of your broad visions and goals for life, as well as plan out and architect tasks for any project that you're working on. Second, it has to be your memory. And what this means is that it's a place where you can put tasks, notes, events, and smart and timely reminders that show up when you need them most. One of the most important thing about memory is that this is a place where you can literally dump all of your thoughts so they don't have to be cluttered in the back of your mind and bothering you throughout the day. The third property is that this system is your habit. You repeatedly visit it and it helps encourage you to build habits that help you live a more happy and productive life. So now on to apps that fill these requirements. For me, the most important property of these apps is that they're really cross-platform in the sense that they are on iOS, Android, as well as uh, desktop apps for Chrome or native desktop apps. Now for calendar apps, to me, there are two clear winners. The first is Google Calendar and the second is Sunrise Calendar. Google Calendar is a friggin' tank. Basically, it can handle almost anything you send to it. It works with tons of other apps out there, and it also has a billion features that are handy. For example, if I want to select two weeks in a row and view them all at once, I can do that. If I want to be able to see my tasks in my calendar, I can do that. If I want to see my reminders in my calendar, I can do that. And Sunrise Calendar, oh, Sunrise Calendar. When you're talking about integrating well with other apps, Sunrise Calendar is the king. First of all, integration with Google Calendar is beautiful. It's seamless and it works in real time. So if I add an event to my Google Calendar, my Sunrise Calendar will be almost instantly updated. And it integrates great with other apps. For example, it integrates with Todoist, Evernote, Facebook, Trello, and more. I think this is great because it allows you to keep track of many things that you care about in the context of time. Now, one really important aspect or habit that you can develop with calendars is to not just use them for events that you have to attend. You can use them to set up milestones for events that are important, goals that you really want to achieve. You can also just take meeting notes right in the event description or link to a set of notes so that you can get to them easily later. I also like to use the calendar to basically log all the stuff I do during the day, at least the major things. I even grade the stuff out done so I can see the things I did that I planned to do and the things that I did not. For note-taking apps, Evernote takes the cake for me. OneNote and Google Drive come pretty close, but I like Evernote because it allows me to easily enter input of multiple different types. For example, I can input text in the same note as I input audio, as I input a document that's scanned and OCR'd and easily searchable. And the desktop and the mobile apps are particularly well suited to each environment. For example, the desktop app is a great place where I can use to organize all of my thoughts and notes in a broader context. And the mobile apps make it really easy to quickly add an audio note, a handwriting, or other things. Now, as far as habits go with Evernote, I really like to use Evernote as my drafting table. What I particularly do is I have separate notebooks for different aspects of my life that I think fulfill me the most. For example, you can have a notebook that's dedicated just for your profession. You can have a second notebook dedicated to traveling, if that's your thing, another notebook dedicated to cooking. I also really like how I can really easily input notes directly via my smartwatch, and uh, I'll link to my Moto 360 video down below if you're interested in that. Now for tasks, I tend to use Evernote to uh, organize and complete my tasks because I can place them in the context of other things like uh, images, text, and audio. But uh, for other people, I can understand why they want an app dedicated to completing tasks. And for that, there are three clear winners to me. First is Todoist, second is Wonderlist, and third is Trello. Todoist and Wonderlist are great because they are focused on you completing tasks and they integrate really well with other services. For example, you can use Todoist with Sunrise Calendar and you can see exactly when your due dates are. You can also use Wonderlist and export a calendar feed and I think that's really nice. Also, I really like how you can integrate those services well with something like If This Then That. I'll link to a mod video below that talks about a bunch of ways you can do that. And Trello is a great app. It basically lets you list a bunch of tasks in a column that you can easily reorganize, and you can see multiple columns from left to right. And the reason why I like this is that 
It's a really simple idea and it can be very useful for a lot of things and you can organize your tasks into different contexts corresponding to the columns. I also really like how Trello is buttery smooth and it's easy to move tasks between the columns. It really is a pleasure to use. Now for habit tracking, there are a lot of interesting options out there like habit list, daily goals, and I run run. I'll link to a bunch of them below in the description, but for me, the winner is Lyft. And the reason why is that first, it's one of the few that's really cross-platform. And second, it integrates this idea of having social motivation for you to complete your tasks. Uh, in their interface, you can ask questions, you can respond to questions, and uh, you can follow other people as well as they can follow you, just like in Twitter. So uh, I haven't used this app too much yet, but I really like it so far. And I'm gonna link to my uh, uh, profile ID below and you can follow me there if you'd like and we can see how that works out. So speaking of habits, I'd like to uh, mention a couple of really good books that inspired me to make this video. The first and my favorite is Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. And if you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend it. It's a tome of wisdom and I like the audio version of it because uh, it's actually narrated by Stephen Covey himself. The second one is Getting Things Done by David Allen. And this book is really nice because it emphasizes this idea that you need to dump your mind of thoughts that are kind of cluttering your mind and uh, getting in the way of you uh, being more productive and happy. So that's it guys. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you found some of the tips and uh, habits and apps useful in this video. If you did, please subscribe, hit the like button. I really have enjoyed seeing uh, the number of people that have subscribed to the channel recently. So thank you so much for that. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.